Okay, students, today we're going to go through section 2.2. Uh, the section is called a histogram. So let me define what a histogram is. My book. My book. So the histogram is a graph consisting of bars. of equal width drawn adjacent to each other uh, the horizontal scale represents classes of quantitative data values and the vertical scale represents the frequencies. So what it looks like is, I'm gonna draw my like a picture of it, give an idea. So on your, on, your, uh, on your horizontal scale, this is the bottom part. These are gonna be your, either your class boundaries, or intervals or the classes. They use either or, boundaries or classes. And then on the vertical are going to represent your frequencies. Now, when you draw, if you were to do frequencies, you're gonna draw this by hand, you need to make sure that the increments of the frequencies go by a, a set width. So if they are you gonna make these twos, then you, you have to make everything by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. If you make it by fives, you gotta make it consistent and make it all fives, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So you gotta be consistent on how you label your frequencies. It's gotta be the same. And so when you draw a histogram, the graph will have bars that starts at the end, at the very beginning, right? And the bars are pretty much next to each other, and they're connected. Now we're going to draw ours on stat disk, and so there might be a little gap in between, which is fine. Uh, they can't make the histogram as perfect as it can be, but usually they're supposed to be. The, the bars are supposed to be stacked next to each other. There's no space in between them. But again, in stat disk, there will be. All right. So we're going to use stat disk to draw. So we use stat disk to construct the histogram. All right, so how do I do it? Okay, so I'm gonna give you the instructions and what to do. So, so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna have to get your stat disk uh, up and loaded, right? You'll, you'll have to get your stat disk open up. And so on the spreadsheet, on the spreadsheet, let me open it up. When you open up stat disk, uh, when you open up stat disk, you will either have to type in your data in column one. You have to type them in manually, right? Or you can upload the data from the data sets. Of course, you have to go to data sets. Uh, six edition, and then you would choose the option from here to upload the data. All right. So I'm going to show you all the McDonald's data that we did before, uh, the one that we had with the list of data. So let me bring that up. Uh, so the data consisted of 50 data. We had our 50 data. And I want to upload that data up. 
into uh, Statdisk. All right. So uh, as you recall, I had the data uh, on my Excel spreadsheet. So here it was. And I'm going to upload it in Statdisk. So I have my I have my data on my file um, that I provided you all with in the files. It's called data data for section 2.2, 2.3. If you go to files, it should be there. And I'm going to upload the data. So I'm going to choose that I can find it. There it is, data for section 2.2, 2.3. So I'm going to upload it. Uh, I don't want the title. So I'm just going to proceed, load it up. And there's my data. For some reason, it titled it 107. But anyways, here's Here's the original data that was not sorted. And I can sort it as you want. You don't have to sort the data to construct a histogram. If you want, you can. You can you can up you can you can sort it by hitting sort data and then uh, select column 107. I don't know why I called it 107, right? And then you hit A to Z. So you can you can put them in order. You don't have to put them in order. I'm gonna leave it out of order. So there's my data for the McDonald's um, data, right? And so I wanna construct the histogram. So once you either type in the data or upload it, you're pretty much ready to go. So what you do is you go to uh, data, you're gonna click on, on the dat data tab, you're gonna select histogram and you'll get the screen. And so it'll ask you, the first thing it'll ask you is, which column do you want to select? Well, for some reason it titled it 107, usually it would be column number one, but it's 107, right? And uh, you have to make sure that you click on user defined. Make sure you click on user defined. If you do not click on the dot, the dot for user defined, it's not gonna come out correctly, all right? So you make sure make sure that you click on user defined and you're going to enter two things so in exercises 2.2 uh you're going to be asked to do to construct some histograms so you're going to need to find the class width and the class start well those class widths and the class starts are given on the previous section so you will have to go back to section 2.1 to get that information. So in the problem, in the, the exercises from 2.2, it'll tell you refer back to exercise such and such back in 2.1. And so you'll have to go back to 2.1 so you can get these two numbers. You gotta get those two numbers. If you don't have those two numbers, your histogram is not going to come up. Well, for the McDonald's, the width was, I believe it was 50 and the class start was 75. So you have to put the width and the class start and make sure that that, that is co uh, connected. If you don't, your graph is gonna come out all, what's the word that you all use, wonky? So yeah, you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you click on user define, make sure you click on user define and you're pretty much ready to plot. And so you, when you plot it, there's your graph. There's the graph of the histogram for the McDonald's uh, data. Notice that the values above the towers of the bars represents the frequencies. As you go, as you recall, when we did our frequency table, you can see that our frequency table had 11, 24, 10, 3, and 2. So we did it right. So there is the graph, the histogram for the data for the McDonald's lunches. Now, for your homework, you all do not need to uh, draw it unless you want to draw it. You're a good artist. You can draw it and copy it exactly how it appears. Or you all can, um, you can, you can create, uh, you can, you can, you can copy it and paste it on a Word document. I can show you. So notice, um, I don't like this 107. I'm just going to put histogram of, I'm going to retitle it. Histogram of McDonald's, Mickey D, lunch. There you go. That looks, that looks better. There you go. There you go. Much better. 
So what you can do is you can copy it. You can download the, the picture of it as a PNG. Okay, it's gonna download it. And you can open it up. And let me share the screen so you can see what it looks like. This is the screen that it looks like. And I am going to copy it. So let's see if I can copy it. Copy, yeah, I can copy to clipboard and I can open up a Word document. All right, the Word document's coming up. I'm going to share my screen. Here's my Word document. And I'm going to title it uh, McDonald's Mickey D. It's still gram. And I don't know, I'll make up a number. Number, you know, it can be whatever problem. We'll, we'll number it number 48 or 43, whatever. And you just paste it. Bam, presto. So what you can do is you can you can start piling up all the graphs from the homework. Download it to a Word document and then save all your graphs so that when you all are ready to take your first exam and you're ready to submit all your homeworks to me, you have all the graphs on one Word document. But don't print it. Remember, you're not gonna print uh, the document. You can always send it to me. You can email me the graphs uh, so that way you don't have to waste ink. So start, you can, that's an option. You guys, if you want, if you wanna print them out, that's perfectly fine. But I recommend that you uh, collect all of the graphs and save them under one Word document and then submit that to me so that you don't have to waste any ink. But that's a histogram. That is a histogram for the McDonald's. Now, we can do, we can do, uh, let's do a problem from, from the exercises. So on 2.2, we can do, uh, I believe there is a problem talking about the eruptions of the Old Faithful Geyser, or we can do Burger King. I, well, we can do the Old Faithful Geyser, right? So let's do let's do the Old Faithful Geyser. Let's do number number nine as as an example, right? So we're gonna do number nine, right? So number nine. And that's it on your homework. Number nine, section 2.2. 2. I don't know what page, but no, we're going to do the old faithful guys. Old faithful. All right. So it says here in exercises nine through 16, construct the histogram and answer the given questions. All right. So it says use the frequency distribution from exercises 11 in section 2.1 on page 49. To construct the histogram. So you see, I told you. So you're going to have to go back to 2.1, and you're going to have to get two things. Remember, we got to find, we have to find the class width, and we got to find the beginning, the start value. We got to find those two. All right. So let's go to page 49. 49, number 11. 49, number 11. All right. There it is. It says use a class width of 25. So my class width is 25. My start is 125. All right, now uh, you can type in those data in into stat disk. Or remember, the this data file is in stat disk already pre-typed in. We can do that one. Let's do that one instead. Instead of having to type all these fifty numbers, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and use the data that's embedded in Satdisk. So let's go to Satdisk and let's get the data. So uh, let me close. Okay, let me share my screen. So there's my screen. And I'm going to get the data from, from data sets in Statdisk. 
right? So again, the, if you use the data in StatDiz, it's going to be more. It's going to be more than 50, and that's fine. It's perfectly fine. So I'm going to go to my sixth edition, and I'm going to scroll down and find the Old Faithful Geyser. And I believe it is number 23, Old Faithful Geyser. I'm going to hit enter, and it asks us to craft a histogram for the durations. All right, so the durations column is the second one, right? So I want to create a histogram for that. Okay, so we're going to go and click on data. You're going to select histogram. I guess we can title it. We can title it Old Faithful Geyser. Faithful Geyser. I don't know how to spell geyser. Oh, we'll just the old oh, faithful durations dash duration. All right, so I labeled it. I'm going to click on user define. I'm going to enter my class width. My class width was 25 as stated in the problem. And my start was 125. And I'm going to hit plot. Oh, I forgot to select my column. Oh, I wanted duration. You see, it gave me an error and it said, hey, 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 you forgot to select the column. Yes, it's supposed to be duration column. And I'm going to hit plot and presto. There's my graph. So my graph does not look normal. It's all shape, right? It's skewed. It looks skewed to the left. Notice that the the peak is on the far right and the tail is on the left. So it is skewed left. All right, so I've got the graph. Uh, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to download it. My PNG. All right, I'm going to click on it. There's my graph. I'm going to copy it. Copy the clipboard. I'm going to go to Word, my Word document. My Word document. I'm going to label it. I already got this one. This was my example. Uh, this one was number, I believe this was number 11 section. Section 2.2. .2. This was number 11. No, oh, number nine. Sorry, number nine. This was the Old Faithful. Okay, the duration. Make it bigger. And I'm going to paste my graph. Boom. All right. There's my graph. There's my histogram for number nine. All right. And that's all you need. I think there's like four or five questions that you will have to do to construct. Uh, the histogram. Now, I don't think I asked you all to do relative frequency histograms, but if you were asked to do a relative frequency histogram, it's pretty much the same, the same steps. The only difference is that the relative frequencies, the, the vertical scale are not the count they become percentages. So if I click on it and hit plot, you now have percentages on the ver vertical scale. But if you notice, the graph remains the same. However, and instead of on the top of the stacks of the bars, there are no longer counts. These numbers are percentages. This is 0.4%, this is 5.2%, this is 2.4%, 13.2%. See, if you, if you click on it, it has percent, right? So, of course, I have to ask Bill Gates to meet with me, so we need to make sure that we click. He needs to upgrade it and make these into percentages, like put a percent symbol on it, but they're not. So just by, make, just by clicking, you know, one of these dots, the frequencies, you have your counts, or the other one is percentages. Right here, these, these, these two will 
whatever button that you click on will determine what kind of graph you have. So the, this one is a frequency. The other one is percentages. 